To many foreign people, Chinese sometimes act very complicated or oversensitive. This is mainly due to the reason that Chinese have to put their guanxi and means in the first place when dealing with their career development and social life. Consequently, you will probably find that a contest between face and truth. Face wins out every time. While this was respectful for people's feelings, you will find it makes management change very difficult. Well, in order to understand Guanxi and Mian's in depth, here's another story. I have a Chinese friend, Mark, who is working for a foreign company in Dalian. Once he was asked by his foreign boss to buy some extra popcorn and beers during a party. After that, the boss seemed like he had totally forgotten the favor. This, however, became a worry to Mark, as he didn't know whether he should ask for money back or not. Maybe it's not a big deal for a Western person at all. From a Western perspective, if you want the money back, just go to your boss, ask and remind him. Otherwise, let it go. Nice and simple, isn't it? Well, for Mark, it turned more complicated. He thought it would possibly make his boss unhappy if he went to him for the money. The boss could have totally forgotten the whole matter. To point it out now, it equal to say the boss used his staff's money and forgot to pay it back. Or even worse, he didn't want to pay it back. Either to ask openly or privately, it would make the boss embarrassed. Mark was afraid of offending his boss. What's more, he's afraid this matter could be overheard by others, and then he will be regarded as a very stingy person, as he cared for even a dozen of bucks. On the one hand, Mark worried he may ruin his guanxi or relationship with the boss. On the other hand, he didn't want to lose face by being a very mean person. In China, making someone to admit to having made a mistake or doing the wrong thing is a rather serious loss of face issue. As a result, after a while of struggling in silence, Mark decided to give up the popcorn money. He didn't want to take the risk of offending his boss and to put himself in a potentially unpleasant situation. Just as the Chinese proverb goes, keep up appearance to cover up one's predicament. Likewise, there are also many examples of men's issues. When I was studying in New Zealand, a very nice couple often held regular weekend parties for the purpose of providing the Asian students with a place to get together and to help them get over their loneliness since they were so far away from their homes and families. There was usually a delicious supper provided and students could grab the food when it was ready. By the time, the hostess often asked us, Are you hungry, dears? Although most of the Chinese students were hungry by the time when everything was ready, guess what? The answers from most Chinese students were, um, a little, or no. Don't be surprised by hearing such answers. It is truly not because the food cooked didn't taste good or wasn't suitable for Asian people's stomachs. It is the matter of face. During the time of growing up, Chinese have been taught to behave modest when interacting with others. We think if we express ideas like, I am really hungry directly, we will make others think we are rude. So we have to be modest, have to hide our real opinions, and even to tell a lie. So telling lies is a common way of preserving face in Chinese culture. Likewise, turning down an invitation with an outright no is not an appropriate behavior. In China, saying no to a request is considered rude or impolite. The most common ways of saying no in China are maybe, yes, maybe, and I will discuss with so-and-so. I'm sure you can tell it when you have dealt with Chinese after a while.